All right, let me get your name. This is Walter Carter. This is Walter Carter at the legendary George Groom Music Shop. What's the rarest instrument you'd say that's ever passed through these doors? Well, there have been one of a kind instruments, but uh, there's only one guitar, let's say, that maybe I'll Carter play. That guitar has come through the store. The makers didn't realize at the time how well suited for bluegrass that those instruments were because there was no bluegrass at the, at the time of uh, you know, Lord, Lloyd Lord mandolins in the 20s or the master tone banjos in the late 20s and early 30s. So they quit, they changed specs, quit making those instruments. They were later rediscovered when, uh, when bluegrass was developed. So that's why they're expensive because the makers quit making them in, in that configuration and are unable to replicate them now. Gibson was going bankrupt in the early 20s and uh, because no one was playing mandolin. And Lore, he'd been with the company for a while, but uh, he was given the task of designing a new family of mandolins to, with the hopes of reviving the, the mandolin market. And it didn't work. So he left. Uh, he later uh, formed a company to make electric guitars with, with a, a former partner at Gibson. And uh, those were dismal failures. He was completely on the wrong track when it came to, to electric instrument design. I went to a picking session, a big one, and it seemed like there must have been a hundred Martin. Martin. Martin still owns the bluegrass market. Uh, if, if it's not a Martin, it's somebody trying to copy a Martin. Bluegrassers are, are pretty uh, uh, tunnel visioned about that. And they, they just they won't accept anything that doesn't look like a Martin. They were the, the most powerful guitars at the time bluegrass was being developed. At the time, there might be one mic that, that a band would gather around. So, so it really was that actually they had the most power as a. As well, a I think some of the Gibsons. I mean, if you look at pictures of the Monroe brothers, Charlie Monroe was playing Gibson. Uh, and in the early uh, Bluegrass Boys, uh, there was a Gibson J35 in, in, the, in the photos. So uh, Martins came along into Bluegrass right about that same time. So I, I think Martins and Gibsons were neck and neck. Who's stingier? Guitar players, mandolin players, or banjo players? Uh, bluegrass players as a group, I think, uh, qualify as is the, the ones who are hardest to get to turn loose there. Is that true? Yeah. Is that right? Do you have a theory about that? Why is that? No. <laughs> I heard that They're every band... That way, I, I heard that every banjo player has three or four banjos, so they'll, you can get them to, to buy instruments well, easier. They, they may not have paid a lot for it. But.